Hello, all the humans, and today I want to talk about the new Chinese Tier 10 light tank in Blitz. Now, this is not it. That is it. Because it's the same tank. So, basically, the new tech tree is the same tank four times and the 5916. With just simply different guns. Now, this vehicle is somewhat interesting because it does have the adaptive concealment bonus, which basically means it gets unspotted quicker. And you can also see who is actively spotting you. So that's a nice extra gimmick for the vehicle to have. And it does quite need it because other than that, it's not outstanding. Let's have a look at the stats of them and start with the armor and it doesn't have any. Done. Now the gun, 3500 DPM, is very good. Which means you can use calibrator on this vehicle and you probably should. Because the penetration is pretty weak for the standard rounds. Only 295. It's five more than the Vickers, but still. So I would definitely use the calibrated on this vehicle just to be sure. And here's the thing. It once again is proven that the Leopard 1 is the best light tank in the game. Even though it's not even a light tank. Neither is the Bat Chat. So 330 alpha damage, which is somewhat lower than the regular 105 millimeter alpha damage. The accuracy is pretty good. It obviously doesn't match the Leopard in any way. However, 0.3 is very solid and it's slightly better than the T100, but it has worse movement dispersion. The problem is with this vehicle as well, it is very limited in the positions that it can play, given it's only 5 degrees of gun depression. So something like a Vickers or a Sheridan or a Leopard is going to be useful in a lot more positions than this one, which let's kind of put it on the shelf a bit. Now, the mobility on this vehicle, the effective horsepower, is... Again, lower than that of the Leopard, which again, as I said, proves that the Leopard's the best light tank, even though it's not a light tank. I did get these games on a stream, so if you don't know that I stream, you do now. Check it out. So, basically, this vehicle is a tier 8 with a tier 10 gun. The hull, well, it's, it's a hull of a tier 7, basically, because the entire tank doesn't change at all. It's only the gun that really changes and a couple of other stats around it, the general make of the thing doesn't change so basically you play the same tank every single time you play this tech tree there's just some gun changes some mobility changes that's about it and obviously you have a you have a bird cage on this vehicle and a tiny tiny side plate which weirdly enough in another game it did work to side scrape against the bat chat but don't rely on it it's not good so that's not great but again don't shoot heat at the side or he at the side of this vehicle First of all, because it has tracks. Second of all, because it does have that skirt, which is going to block your AT round, which is not going to be fun. So, 330 alpha damage is, again, a deviation from the standard, which should be 350, given that this is a 105mm gun. But then again, the E50M has 340, and, and then the STB-1 has 350, the Leopard has 360, so Wargaming clearly doesn't care about the caliber at this point. What? You have to do in a situation like this is obviously get the hell out of there. You don't want to fight in an unfair time. Now, the DPM is pretty good, right? It's not quite the, the good of the, of the Leopard, right? But it is enough to, for example, out DPM that of a T100 LT. The gun is better. The mobility is not. So basically, to make a choice between this vehicle and the T100 LT, you have to think what is more important to you, gun or mobility? Because whichever one it is, that's the tank you should choose. Or if you want both, get the Sheridan, I guess. So, and you also have good depression. What are the Vickers? So, here's, like, here's the thing. It only has 5 degrees of gun depression. And that quite limits my ability to drive. And it also limits the amount of positions that you can play. Because there's going to be a lot of points where you want to peak, but then you can't because you don't have a gun depression. Which for a light tank is what ideally the more positions you can peek from the better because that's how you play right a heavy goes one space then you fight that's done in a light tank you have to move around you have to be dynamic because you obviously you can't get shot by anyone pretty much so that's not great five degrees of gun depression on a light tank is pretty damn bad and it always will be however this is one of those vehicles where if you want it sure there's nothing against it. It's, it's not, not a bad tank by any means. There is no doubt about that. It is a fine tank. It plays as it should. And it works. However, the problem is, besides the new gimmick, which they're just gimmicks, it doesn't offer you that much. Because here's the thing. The Leopards is a better tank. The Vickers is a better tank. It's a better option for what it does. And if you do truly want to go spotting, 
which in Blitz isn't really a thing. And T100 is a better option. Now, it's a 2v3. I'm 700 HP, and we've got an object on 400 HP. And that Sheridan is a big problem, because at this point, if you're dealing with a situation like this, what you have to do is you first take out the easiest target. Then you take out the most dangerous target. And then you take out everything else. What is the easiest target? Well, one shots. Tanks that are obviously incompetent or that you find on your own or a, a tank, a lone tank destroyer that you can circle and kill. Those are kind of the easiest targets. Then, what are the dangerous targets? Well, in, in, in my case, the 183, the bat chat, because he can clip me and I obviously can't retaliate against that clip. So, ideally now, the object got a nice shot onto the Sheridan. Ideally now, my goal is take out the Sheridan and then get one shot into the bat chat. So that he can't clip me, right? Get one shot, peek back. Because I don't want to trade with the bat chat. And here we go. There's the shirt. Look at him. He's tasty. And he's dead. There we go. And now, we got that done. And now that remains an ice 4 and the bat chat. I don't want to run into the bat chat. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to see if I can find him, right? And there he is. And this is exactly what I want to have. HE into his back. Now he's a one shot. He can't trade basically. Because he has the autoloader, he can't unload his clip into me. I can go back, I reload, boom, finish him off. Perfect. And now, I am right here, and the eyes fall closely misses. But, at this point, I have the object friend still alive. I have 468 hit points. I can risk it a bit. Alright, so, he shoots HE, now I can go for it. I know he just fired, I know he, he's reloaded his 10 seconds. So I gotta go go and now he's again reloading and the object gets his fourth kill because why not so it is a solid tank is it a great tank no is the gimmick gonna make a huge difference well to an average player certainly to a really good player the information that the tank gives you you probably already know anyway. With game number two on for despair. And I think I aced it like five times already. So basically, if you get a tier 10 on release day, it's, it's very, very easy to ace it. So anyway. Now this thing is solid. There is nothing bad about it. But don't let anyone tell you like, oh my god, this is new attain, this is OP. Ugh. It is not. It is very much not. Now, the thing is about this vehicle that it's new, but it's not special. Like, you can get this kind of thing out of other tanks as well. Let's say you already have a Vickers. Well, imagine a Vickers with 5 degrees of gun depression and the weird gimmick. There's your WZ-1321. So in that case, I don't really think there's a point to get it then unless you're collecting all the tier 10s. But it's not like a tank where if you don't have it, you have to have it already have a light tank, if you already have someone, some tank that is fun, you play that tank, you have fun. Now in this case, on, on stream right here, what I'm explaining is that what these heavies are doing is a bad idea because they're basically just giving the enemy free map control, and that's not what you want. At this point, I have to fight a Sheridan 1v1, which is not what you want to do because he's got 560 alpha damage, I got 330, which means he wins if he can peek, basically. So I have to peek multiple times to be able to make up for that. And that's HE into my face. Um, and it does pen. Which is not great. Lower plate, weak. So, watch out for that. But now, I'm gonna have to hope he high roll. I high roll, and I do. 330 alpha damage, 360 roll. That was necessary, otherwise I would have been fucked. So, don't brawl with the Sheridan, ideally, because the Sheridan is, while it does have significantly less DPM than this vehicle, you do have the alpha damage advantage, which means if you can push it, if you can get those shots off while he reloads, great. If not, oof. Now at this point, there's four of them left. I know where they are. I'm looking right here. Oh, now, now I've seen it. He's over there. B3 is over there. There's no camper in that bush, which means I can now, without any bother, push this 183 and decide to absolutely annihilate him. The absolute enemy of anyone playing a light tank or a leopard or a 50B or any tank that doesn't quite have armor anywhere. So, or literally anyone. 
then that's great. And this is how you want to play this vehicle as well, right? You don't want to just be there in the middle of everything. You want to have the enemy point at your teammates, and then you shoot them while they're doing that. Pretty much. Might sound selfish. Yes, it is. However, if you're the one taking the shots, you're playing the light tank role. That's just how that works. Because in Blitz, light tanks aren't for spotting. Light tanks are mediums that have less armor and mobile gun. That's it. With that said, is the 1321 a solid tank? Yes. Should you spend all your free XP and splurge all you have to obtain it? No. It is a vehicle that you could have. But you don't have to have. So with that said, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.